Hey folks, it's Grimwit from Natch Evil. We're playing Casual Chuck today. With me today as a fill-in is Jet. Say hello, Jet. I'm a fill-in. <laughs> How are you feeling? I'm feeling good. I'm glad you got that that healing feeling. Right. Also, it's false. The it's uh the question today is, what is your favorite movie trailer? Yeah, isn't it? I, I knew you, you're, you're a movie guy, right? You yes, like sir. You like movies and films. I do. Give me just a second, because I can't hear you over this loud-ass casual truck. Fucking casual-ass truck. There we go. Okay, good. This thing is 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 still. Now I need to check the route that it gave me because sometimes the routes they give me are bullshit. Okay. All right. Favorite freight. Ah, favorite. Favorite. Favorite trailer. Oh, this is this will be a quick drive. This actually won't be too bad. Oh, so many choices. I really like the Army of Darkness trailer. It seems so fun. It's just so much fun. Especially the the bit where it's like, uh, raise the drawbridge. Uh, was raise the drawbridge. Uh, collect, uh, uh, um. Fuck, I can't remember it now. Yeah. Uh, just the general feeling yeah, of how good it is. Raise the drawbridge and drop the Oldsmobile. <laughs> drop the Oldsmobile is a great line to say. It is. I'm trying to think of... Yeah, you know what? I, and again, this will probably show off how pretentious I can be. I did not like the movie being John Malkovich. But I loved the trailers. Which were probably the reason why the ga the uh, whole movie flopped. Is because nobody understood that it was even a movie trailer. Mm -hmm. I think I've seen bits and pieces of it, but I liked it. It's... Dark. It is very dark. It is very dark. Let's see, what else do we like? I like the trailer to The Exorcist 2, but for the reason, not for the reason you might think. Exorcist 2 is a bad movie, but the way that it's, the trailer is cut makes it look like it's the most insane, batshit insane, crazy ass thing you will ever see. And just turned out really boring and confusing. It seems like uh, I saw something recently on YouTube that talked about trailers that were better than the movie. Yes, I did not watch that, but I want to. Sounded like something like the uh, the movie trailer critic would have done. I did not know there was one. Oh yeah, I don't know if he's still doing stuff, but. Uh, hold on, I gotta get the phone. I am not pausing for you. Let's listen in to the drama that is Jet's life. I'll be quiet. I can barely make out what he's saying. Hi. Okay, I'm back. Sorry. Hey, no hey, problem. Oh, that what? son of a bitch. I don't know who it was, but they hung up on me. Fuckers. Maybe it's some guy, like, watching you through the window with binoculars going, Oh, shit, he's talking on Skype. Call him. Nah. That was... Let's see who it was. So where were we? Uh, yes, yeah, it, it was me. Crazy. I was talking to you. Kind of like that guy from uh, Lost Highway. And I decided to call you while I'm talking to you. <laughs> that was a good movie. That movie was... I finally saw... Uh, a after everything cleared up, because I had to leave you guys early for that movie, but I finally saw the ending, and I vaguely understood what was going on. Like, there's some kind of time travel involved, and... 
face swapping and identity swapping and revenge. I'm not real sure. Mm. Not no. not real sure what the hell happened there. I it wasn't it it wasn't what he thought it was. Oh, was it, it, it was like um I don't know. Brad Pitt and the other guy. Twelve Monkeys? No. We uh, were revealed that it was the other guy and there was no Brad Pitt. What? Oh, you're talking about Fight Club. Fight Club. How do you how do you not know Fight Club, dude? This is the best movie I, ever. I do know Fight Club. I just can't remember the other guys. Edward Norton. Shut up. Fuck you. Oh. The reason why you can't remember the uh, guy who wasn't Tyler Durden is because he never says his name in the movie. Uh, in the script, he is referred to as Jack. And it's only because he says, I am Jack's X. You know, I am Jack's Y. I am Jack's Z. I think it's the same way in the book as well. He's only referred to as Jack. Okay. That was a thing. All right. All right. What about you? What about you? What about you? What, what kind of trailers did you? Um, you know, first off, we have to preface this with the fact that I hate commercials. So generally okay. when I see a, a movie trailer, I switch off. And that's also because I don't like things that are just copies of each other, and movie trailers are copies of each other. Oh, very much now, yeah. Um, so I like the movie trailers that stand out. That's why I mentioned the movie trailer for um, being John Malkovich. I, I thought it was very clever. I'll, too clever for its own good, obviously. Nobody really understood it. <laughs> but, uh... What was another good one? Let me think. That's about it. That's the I... only one I liked. Even marginally. Well, okay. Um, uh, I remember... seeing on YouTube the old trailers for Star Wars. The, uh... The first three from the 70s and the 80s. What, the original Star Wars trailers? Correct, sir. Yeah, how do you sell a movie like that? It was really interesting. Because, you know, uh, A New Hope really isn't like a typical sci-fi movie. You know what I mean? I do, because it doesn't have really a beginning or an end. It's right. It's the middle chapter, and it kind of looks Breaking like the... that sci-fi mold of this has to happen, and this has to happen. So, yeah, how did they sell it? Well, the, that that new hope was... It's a picture of space, stars and whatnot. It's coming. A new type of movie coming to your galaxy. And it shows um, some clips from the movie. And it's basically saying this is something that is, you'll, it, it, it's something that uh, it's never been before. This is a different way of doing a sci-fi movie. You're gonna be blown the fuck away. And then it has Star Wars and the star, uh, the, um, the title Star Wars, and, and it blows up. Coming to your galaxy this summer. Huh. I saw Titanic if it was done by different uh, directors. That was funny. Like it was a horror movie. Well, part of it was uh, what if George Lucas helped remaster the Titanic so then it had stormtroopers in it <laughs> and all of the guns were replaced by walkie talkies? No, that's Spielberg. Really? I thought that was uh, Lucas. No, that's Spielberg. Hmm. Spielberg took away the uh, walkie talkies, uh, the guns from ET in a. In a DVD release. Yeah, and that... You, and people bitched him, and he regretted it. Yeah. Because unlike unlike uh, Lucas, Spielberg knows when he's actually wrong. He listens to people. Yeah. We, I think we all trusted Lucas until The Phantom Menace. And I trusted him until the re-release of the, the uh, original trilogy. When he started putting the stupid shit in that didn't really... Oh, when he started cutting out bits. 
in the original, I have a distinct memory of this because it was my favorite part of the movie from when I was a little kid and upwards, was in the first movie, there's a point where they're on the Death Star and a stormtrooper, like a group of stormtroopers, are turning around to walk through a door and one of them bumps his head. Yeah. And they took it out. And I'm like, you son of a bitch. <laughs> that was my favorite part of the movie. That was the favorite part of your of the movie. That was my favorite part of the movie. Alright, I love you, but come on, man. What? That's silly. A mistake is your favorite part of the movie. Yes. You're a strange person. I don't and see I, the, what the problem is. You. It first off, it tells a story. It tells a story in half a second. One bump, and you know what was going on after that sh shot was cut. And you know somebody got ratted out. Maybe somebody lost their job. There was a story from that one bump. So, yeah, I like that. That's my favorite if, part of the if movie. there was a story behind it, why was it kept in? It wasn't kept in. It was cut out. It's in the, per in the original print, though. That's an excellent question. I'm guessing it's because of the budget for the movie. Because if you remember, Star Wars was not a high-budget movie. Yes, it was. It was a very high-budget movie. No, it wasn't. Yes, it was. It Come on. Really... Shut the fuck up and let me talk. <laughs> Sorry. It was a very expensive movie. The, they had $2 million to start with. And they blew that all on weed and drugs. <laughs> I believe you. Because they... Drug addicts. They got more money, and because they were creating things that never happened, that were never thought of before, sound effects, uh, uh, blue screen work, they went through that money like it was burning. <laughs> that stuff cost big money, because they were literally creating new types of ways of doing uh, CGI. I know what you meant. It's not CGI. But I know what you meant. Well, I'm going to have to defer to your, uh, to your knowledge on this subject, considering that I honestly... Nah, it's... After I, I reached a certain age, it, it stopped being about Star Wars, and it started being about Doctor Who, so... I only know that because I watched a documentary on, on, the, on Star Wars like, one day. Did they mention the guy bumping his head? No. Ah, uh, see, I, just, I don't they, even care about it now. Meow, meow. Meow, meow. Meow, meow, meow. I'm passing over some whiskers, by the way, on the road. Kind of kind of cool. Uh, anyway. No, it's, um... See, yeah, I really don't give a shit about Star Wars. There are these little bits that happen in a movie that I appreciate, and usually they tend to be flaws, because the flaws tell me more than... How do I put this? There is, an, there is author's intent, right? Yeah. And then there's the author slipping up, and I like the slips. Um, because then they're they're human. Yeah. Well, not just that. It, because the slip ups tell you more about the author than the movie does. Although the movie will tell you an awful lot about the author, but there are so many people. The director, I think. You in in the movie, yeah, I guess it would be the director um, and the editor. The only thing I've seen like that that I appreciated uh, on the same level was done on purpose and that was the uh, the scene in Black Dynamite where the guy hits Black Dynamite and the actor's like what the fuck and then it suddenly cuts and it's a completely different guy yeah. and you know it, of course I appreciate that at the same level because it's the exact same joke it's just done on purpose mm -hmm. brilliant Uh, other than that, I don't know. I 
I guess I don't appreciate Star Wars as other people do, and I certainly don't geek out about it. I I never... I I actually kind of felt left out when I talk with my friends and they're talking about Star Wars. And I've seen the movies, except for uh, Episode 2 and 3. They're okay. Are they? Because I don't hear that they're okay from anyone except you. you. (laughs) They're okay. I didn't say they were great. I said they were okay. I heard they were terrible. <laughs> and I also heard that they make the, the original trilogy hilarious. You could say that about the, uh, about, uh, the first one. And That's I- true. Just the whole thing of like... Like, like that, uh, that skit from uh, uh, Robot Chicken. You know the one I'm talking about. Where Dark Vader's is like... Luke, I am your father. No, oh, yeah. that's impossible. Yeah. And Leia's your sister. sister. That's improbable. And, and C-3PO, I built him. That, I. That's really unlikely. <laughs> and the Force? Well, that's just many chlorians in your bloodstream. If you're not I, taking this shit seriously, I'm getting away. <laughs> if you're not going to take this seriously, I'm yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Just... Just fucking... <laughs> One word to destroy the entire series. Midichlorians. The Big. moment midichlorians entered into the mix, me and my friends were just like, nope, that's it. Fucking, we're done. Whatever. Bullshit. I'm switching back to Doctor Who. <laughs> no, we're done here. Pack up. <laughs> With the lights. I just... Oh, God. Why, why would you even... Uh, because he doesn't know how to friggin' write. I'll agree with that. It's like, it's like the the uh, uh, um, Halloween remake by Rob Zombie. How does how yeah? Does what Michael the shit? Michael Myers get his powers? Is he just does he make a deal with the devil? Is he just pure evil? No, his family is quite trash, and he's sad. Like, really? Why? Because bullshit. Because because people have their own vision, and it doesn't match up with yours. In these cases, I think it probably would have done them better to just start a new franchise. I mean, think about it. If Rob Zombie hadn't have used the Halloween deal, if he had hmm. just, if it had just been Rob Zombie's story about, I don't know, St- Steve the Butcher. Yeah. Then it would have been a better movie than Halloween because he's dealing with an old franchise that everybody's got their own interpretation of. Right. And, I'm, and it has his own uh, backstory and the way things are set up. Yeah, everybody has their idea of what Michael Myers is, and this was just one person's, Rob Zombie's, idea, and it didn't match up, which made people angry. Although, not that he's. Not that he does so great with his own yeah. uh, intellectual property. I mean, look at the House of the Thousand Corpses. Even though I did like, I did like the sequel, but I didn't. I I liked the sequel because I tried to imagine a world where House of House of a Thousand Corpses didn't exist, and it worked. <laughs> oh shit! I'm stuck. I just oh, no. thought it was uh, being extreme to be extreme and there's no rhyme or reason for this yeah but I I find no problem with extreme for being extreme I mean it can work in some time places but he's gotta stop putting his wife in his movies I know it gets him laid <sighs> what did I see recently that was extreme oh by the way I need to start wrapping this up because I've just now made the delivery and I'm going to try and bar- park like a pro <laughs> Like Kevin Smith, his wife can't act, but he puts in his um, puts, him, puts her in, a, in his movies because he gets too late. And you know what? That that that's okay. Okay, this isn't working. I'm just gonna cop out of it. <laughs> hey, excellent! It only took me four hours to do a six-hour trip. Whee! Yay! Okay, well, I think that's pretty much it for today. Damn. 
And uh, hopefully my special guest will show up next time. But uh, my, if he doesn't, you free, you free next week? Heck yeah. All right. Same bat time, same bat channel, or truck channel. Or, or something. I don't know. I'll see you guys next time. Say, say goodbye, Judd. Goodbye, casual truck. Hey, do you have Skype? Want to be on the show? Got a silly screenshot of Euro Truck that I can use as a title card? Then become rich and famous? Then use the massive amounts of money to buy Switzerland and become lord of all chocolate? Then send mail to natchevil at gmail.com and include truck in the subject so I know it's from you. And thanks for watching.